Okay, so that was a crazy call. This guy said that he, 20 years ago, bought a house and in that house he found a whole vintage sports card collection that the previous owners have left behind. He's been sitting on it for 20 years and today he's decided to sell it. And right now he's gonna be driving to the store. He should be here in a little bit and hopefully we're gonna buy it from him. We're gonna see what this looks like. Good morning, gentlemen. How you doing? Uh, found these in an attic about uh, 20 some odd years ago. Um, went ahead and bought these little containers and also within it they had little packaging so I took the liberty of packaging every single one of these Whoa. right and then what I ended up Ooh. doing was was putting them in a luggage container and then putting that in a box and then basically forgetting about them until about three weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> whoa you got really amazing okay all right all right all right all right so you found these you found these in an attic? I, I found them in an attic on a house that I was restoring because I was flipping houses. Okay. I found it in an attic. So you bought a house. Bought a house. And all of these cards were in, in the, the attic, attic of the house you bought. In a box. Someone left them behind? Somebody left them behind. Oh my gosh. So I basically went out and I bought these little wow. containers and the little plastic wrappers. Now, did you know anything about cards at the time? No, I still don't know anything about cards. You know, I mean, some of these, as you go by, it's 1969 to 71-ish. I mean, I was a kid back then, so of course, you know, I mean, there's names in here that I know, like, you know, Unitas, Joe John Namath, okay. um, Len Dawson, for Dawson, instance, yep. he's like an announcer now, I think. OJ Simpson, <laughs> OJ. that, wow. The, my understanding is that card went low in, low in value, didn't it? Or is it back up again? I so, honestly haven't looked recently. Yeah. These are old, this is wild, yeah. We don't see, you know, vintage football walk in the store that often. I mean, this is, oh, there's Johnny Unitas right there, yeah, look at that. Johnny you. I got a couple Johnny, of those. A couple of Johnny Unitas cards. Wow, look at that. That is a vintage Johnny Unitas card. What year are these? Six. D9 or 71, okay. I went ahead and it's them. like 70. Yeah, 1970. 70, yeah, mm -hmm. 1970. But what I think is cool wow. about them is how bright they are, right? Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. they're, they're not tarnished, as so one you, would expect. You found these all, this whole collection was in an attic of a house that you bought to flip. Yep. And you said you didn't know much about cards, but you... Was smart enough to put them in a container, yeah. and then... So, you bought, the, so I was, you bought these binders and you bought these binder pages and put them all in it back then? Yep. And then what's happened to them over the last 20 years? They just travel with me from house to house. And uh, the last house, and like I said, I went out and bought a new one of those new Soligard, really uh -huh. cool Soligard. So I figured, let me throw out the old old luggage, pulled it out, and I think this thing's kind of heavy. And then I opened it up and there you go. <laughs> so you, re you rediscovered <laughs> yes. your own collection. Yes, apparently. This is wild. Yeah, yeah look at this. All of these old, these are 1969 basketball cards right here. Looks like someone was trying to build a complete set. They got some duplicates and... And like I said, I was doing a pretty good job till I ran across old Wilt. Oh, wow. So... Look at that. Wilt Chamberlain. What an iconic card. 1969. Unbelievable card. Wow. Definitely a nice one. Yeah, really, really nice. Yeah, this is a nice collection. Well, first of all, congratulations. Thanks. That's a nice thing to find randomly in the attic of a yeah. house. A yeah. Oh, look at that. I don't Oscar even know who Robertson. Oscar Robertson was. Well, Oscar, Robert, Oscar Robertson was like the all-time triple-double king. So this guy actually averaged a triple-double stat line for an entire season. He was, he was, he was the man. for like a, a lot of yep. his career. He was, he was the man. He was putting up yep. before, and they weren't even counting all the stats that they do today back huh. then, but he was just a statistical wizard. You know, um, he did everything well. He played every aspect of the game well. But yeah, between, you know, Will Chamberlain, a lot of his records still persist today. He's got, a lot of his records will never be touched. Between Will Chamberlain and Oscar Robertson, you got two all-time great record setters who own a lot of stuff in the record books between those two guys. That's, That's pretty cool. incredible to see That's these very cards cool. in both of theirs. The Will's not, the Will card's not in the best condition. You can see, you know, the corner up there a little bit of staining along the top. That corner's a little bit soft. You've got some staining down here at the bottom of the card as well. A little bit of a soft corner. Uh, the Robertson looks like it's in a little bit of a better condition. You still got a little bit of a corner issue there, some edge issue along the bottom. You've got a little print dot there, um, but it's you know slightly off center. But you know for the most part, for a card that is as old as that card is, for a card that's 50 years old, 
it's still, it presents very nice. Yeah, That's it's beautiful. The, the colorings are fabulous, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For like sure. I said, I don't know cards from a can of paint. Right. right? But I know what pretty looks like, right? Yeah. So what are you looking to do with all of these? Are you trying to sell all of these as a collection? Or are you trying to get some of these graded? Like, what's your, what's your plan here today? Identify the most valuable cards. Okay. Determining if they if it's worth the price to have them PSA rated. Okay. Right? And then for those cards, sell the rest. Yeah. I mean, I, my objective is to get rid of all of them, but I think a card's more valuable if it's PSA rated, right? But and that's it, one of the it, reasons I came in was this, that's the first thing I said. Yeah. What do you think the rating of that card is? Because that would determine if I should either well, say, give it to you and sell it to you. Do you mind if I take this out? Yeah, do what you gotta do. Yeah. So I, I'm, not, I'm not a professional grader. What I will say is that they grade these cards very, very tough. Um, PSA is very, very particular on these older cards. You could also consider SGC as a grading option as well. I mean, it's a pretty clean copy overall, but man, are they gonna scrutinize certain things. Yeah, they do. like They're that gonna little gap that. That's really gonna hurt the grade. Um, Unfortunately, that you know that corner right there, the top. There's a little bit. Hey, can we just iron it, it down? Well, <laughs> I no, I know. you cannot do any of those things. <laughs> uh, but other than that, the surface is pretty nice. I mean, I think it's a. Oh, I'm not a grading expert, but I think it's probably like a four to five, somewhere in that range would be my guess. That, what, what was your gut I feeling was on it? Right in the four and five. You were right well. in the four to five range. That's my gut on it. Yeah. Which shows you, unfortunately, how just a few little things can knock the grade down oh, quite a oh, bit. Yeah. Um, but that's that's where I think they would probably, how they would probably grade it, would be in a four or five type range on that card, would be my guess. Um, and if I'm surprised by the graders, unfortunately, normally I'm surprised on the low side. So if they decided to like give it a three, I wouldn't be shocked. Um, but if, you know, my assessment of it would probably be more like a four or five. Um, so well, a little bit of a creasing there and a little bit of a dot there if you catch in the right light. But yeah, that just to give you a sense of that, some of these yeah. may grade a little bit higher than that, um, but it's real hard to get anything above, you know, like a six or seven on these types of cards yeah. with, you know, just, you know, just simply, not just, not just obviously the age of them and the fact that before you put them in the binder, they probably weren't stored perfectly, but even just the printing conditions, like if you look at a card like this, you can see right there, you've got a print dot, you've got a print dot, you've got a print dot, you've got a pretty significant crease, you got an edge issue. So a card like this, I mean, you're looking yeah. at probably a one or a two yeah. with that type of crease in it especially, and the print dots and that kind of thing. So this one, this one in a PSA three lasted $119 according to Market Movers, PSA four lasted $255, PSA five, which, you know, it could be a little bit of a stretch for the card, but $290. Now, of course, you got grading fees, you know, and that kind of thing yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. and time involved and everything like that. Yeah, so if you, and are you interested in selling this one or did you want to hold that one back? That's probably the most valuable card. I imagine I haven't gone through all of it. Is this the most valuable card yes. you've seen so yep. far in the collection? I'm thinking, you know what? I think I'm going to hold it back. I'm interested in getting a better case for it. Yeah. yeah. And then right. I'm going to leave it alone for another 20 years. I, I right? think that's a good idea. So what our strategy would probably be with the rest of these cards is we would probably pull out anybody that that is noteworthy at all and, and we would definitely get them graded you know that's what we would do uh, before we put them out in the showcases the ones that are more commons are probably only worth grading if they're in a particularly high grade if it's you know more of a mid grade or a lower grade the commons we may sell raw it just kind of depends on the particular card like i'm looking here in market movers at this jim king 1969 tops card um, so raw condition it is typically selling for a few dollars. If you did get it graded, PSA 6 went for $39. Another PSA 6 went for $20. Another PSA 6 went for $19. So this one would really only be worth grading if you know we could be sure that it would probably get like a PSA 8 or above, because yeah. then that puts that into kind of the real high end yeah. range in terms of grades for 1969 basketball. And that one probably wouldn't. I, I, I'm not sure anything in here is gonna get an eight. Yeah. So probably the strategy is that the notable cards like Oscar Robertson would be one we would grade even if it's mid condition. The rest of them might be ones that we just sell raw for people who wanna build sets. Yeah. They're a few bucks, you know, they're not super expensive, but they're beautiful cards to have in the display case. They're cool pieces of history. Yeah. So like, like of I said, nature. just do your analysis and let's, sure. let's figure out. Okay. You know?
Let me and, take and it's it. all the cards, right? So yep. yeah. So let's, except for old Wilt here. Except for Wilt. I think I'm gonna put Wilt. Uh... Yeah, you should hold on to Wilt. Wilt, Wilt. If you let hold on to that as a memory of the collection, I think that's kind of a cool, you know, yeah. a cool thing yeah. to hold on to. All right, so that's the basketball. Let's take a quick flip through the football. Outside. Yeah, when I when I initially went through these, I didn't realize these are actually tops too. Yeah, what year right. is this? I'm not familiar with this 69, year. 6970? One of the, was, the all okay. this is between 69 and 70. Bob 71. Hayes, he was a big name for the Cowboys. He was a good uh, good receiver for the Cowboys. Oh yeah, that is 70. 1970 tops Bob Hayes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, once again, kind of a card that in raw conditions worth two bucks. Yeah. But, you know, and it sounds like you got a lot of that already charted out. But, you know, with something like this gradable, let's take a look. You were smart to preserve all these the way you did when you found them in that attic. You've done a nice job of, you know, keeping these for 20 years. Now, unfortunately, this card has, despite the fact, you know, I know you did a good job of bundling it up, just the nature of the card. Oh, yeah. The way this card has kind of the clear surface on it. You can see it's kind of starting to bubble up there along the edge, and it's got a little bit of creasing and you know issues with the Looks surface. Like it's a little off-centered as well. Yeah, so this yeah. is probably this probably falls into the camp of probably not worth grading even though it's a cool cool vintage card. And for these but, I, I didn't particularly other than like Len Dawson, I didn't see anybody I, I mean like I said when it comes to this Len thing. Dawson. Len yeah. Dawson. He recently passed away. Oh, Daryl LaMonica? Yeah. I remember him back in the day? Uh Belinikov. 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 I one. was a big Raider fan. Um Fran Tarkenton. Yeah, yeah. That's a yep. good one as well. Sonny Jurgensen. Well, I don't know. This yeah. page has got a lot of stars. Yeah. He was a good player. All right, so now we're getting into another year And here. they're broken out by teams. Broken out by team. You got the Bears. Yeah. Dick Butkus. Yeah, Gale Sayers. Dick Butkus. Early career Dick Butkus. Look at that. Gail Sayers. Wow, that's really cool. A couple of Dick Butkus cards there. So that one's definitely worth looking at individually. OJ Simpson. The juice. The juice. <laughs> the juice. Probably worth less, but it well, is what it is. In general, but there's kind of a you know kind of a little fan following for his cards still. Was it United? Oh, did I skip by United? Oh, Johnny U. Oh, I skip by United. Oh, oh, a I couple think United. A couple United. I just flip right by the Colts. All right. Oh, so, look yeah, how so clean that's, the back of that one is. Yeah, that was yeah, clean. That would definitely be worth looking at as well. Here's so using market movers. Scroll through and look at the different. And that's another so thing. So that's the 1970 tops card number 180. I can see that right here. In market movers, you can see that's obviously the same card there. Let's look at mid grades of this one too. Yeah, both of these, not ideal condition. This one's a little cleaner. The surface looks clean on it, the back looks clean, but so you do they're have- So they're judged on the front and the back, aren't they? They are, they judge the front harder than they judge the back. Okay. But they do look on both sides. The This one does have a, quite a bit of corner issue at the bottom. Both of those corners are not an ideal condition. This is probably, you know, probably kind of in that mid-grade range, you know, again, for that card. The centering looks pretty good on it. The edges look pretty decent. There's a little edge issue there, but for the most part, it looks pretty decent. I'm not seeing any surface issues. It's really just those two corners that unfortunately are gonna knock it down to kind of a mid-grade on that. So like a PSA 5 of that's doing about 42 bucks. So. Yeah. Not super valuable, probably still worth grading, but not, you know, that's not gonna be super valuable. This yeah, one's that little, one's off center. This off. one's in worse condition than that. Yeah, this one's not gonna grade well at all. I think it's got a little bit of a scratch there too. So that one's, you're probably looking at a pretty low grade, you know, like a two or something of that nature. But that one I think, you know, has a chance of kind of a mid grade. Something in that five range would be my guess on that card. So that's football. And so you got a bunch of a bunch oh, of those, bunch yeah, of a, bunch, a bunch from bunch. that year. Got some Joe Namath in there. Okay. If you're a New York's fan, I believe New York. There you go, old Joe. Yeah, look at that, Broadway Joe. And then this is the baseball collection. Yeah, this was the one was fun. I got mm -hmm. like the one's the more memorable to me mm -hmm. as a kid, right? Yeah. Raleigh, Raleigh fingers. Raleigh fingers. Yeah. Vita Blue. Uh huh. Uh huh. Sandy Alomar, the dad of Sandy Alomar Jr. Oh, Willie Mays. There you go. Yeah, actually, unfortunately, this one's got a lot of creases on it. Yeah, it's got a crease there. That one's not gonna grade out because it's got a crease, crease, crease. Might be worth getting a grade of just as an authentic simply to have it, you know, because otherwise that one would grade probably like a one with all those issues, but it might be nice to just put it in a slab and have it slabbed authentic just to, have it slabbed up as a Willie Mays card. What does that go for, raw? Raw, it's looking like 30 bucks or something. Like the 20, 30 range. Okay, yeah, that's probably what that would go for. So yeah, this is one of your more valuable cards. Third year Nolan Ryan, and that one's actually in pretty nice condition. I think that's a, I think that's a probably a good mid grade. I think that's got a shot at a five. Market mover shows a five is about is around two hundred dollars. A four or five is around two hundred dollars on that card. So yeah, that's probably. You know, again, you got to get it graded. Obviously, there's yeah. fees involved with grading, and you got to get the grader on a good day. You know, <laughs> but get the, right, get the right grader. Get the right grader on the right day. 
And uh, but that would definitely be worth you know considering doing doing grading on. Yeah. Pete Rose. There you go. Well, Petey. Yeah, Pete Rose. Cool. Johnny, Johnny Bench. Bench. Yeah. That's a fun one. Yeah, you got a lot of big names in here. Harmon Killebrew, if he's a Hall of Famer. Well, it's a great collection. Congratulations. Thanks. And I guess give Trey and I a moment here yeah, do just your thing. to kind of talk through this. All right, Trey, so what are we thinking here? So I'm kind of thinking pull out some of the bigger cards, Okay. figure out what those are worth, and then... And then the rest just kind of do a bulk price. Yep. I mean, you know, what are you, the rest of these, I think you're probably looking at a lot of like value bin type yep, cards, a lot of, right? Like so almost like making a value bin for the vintage making cards Making a here. vintage value bin. Yep. A lot of cards priced a couple of bucks, you know, that kind yeah, of thing. Probably okay. like anywhere from like two to five to okay. eight, somewhere in there. So we're gonna look to pull out the cards that might be, you know, what, 50 bucks plus, that kind of exactly, thing. And then yep. just kind of make a bulk offer on yep. the rest. What is the uh, total number of cards? Have you added that yes, up? Yes, 679. So Six, 679 yep. total cards. Yep. Okay. All right, so let's go through. Have you started to flag? I know we just yes. kind of going through it. We had identified some of the ones that were a little bit better. You had that Nolan Ryan. Yeah, part. that was the big one on the baseball. Okay. Was there were there any others that on the baseball side that you felt like were real notable ones that we needed to price out individually? Maybe the Willie Mays. There's okay. a couple of Willie Mays in there that kind of stuck out to me. Okay. I'm gonna pull those. I'm gonna pull these out of the album as we go. Okay, yeah, so these two go. Willie Mays. The challenge with the Willie Mays cards is they're just not in in good condition. Yeah. You know, they're 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 both really beat up. I mean, it's cool that they're there, mm -hmm. but they're they are really really. They're beat definitely up. not gonna be as worth worth as much as they could be. With yeah, in better better shape. But still, though, probably cards that even if you got because it's simply because it's Willie Mays. Exactly. Yep. Probably get them graded, maybe just put them in authentic, mm -hmm. you know, slabs. And they're still cards for the showcase. Yeah. They wouldn't sell for a lot, but they're still cards for the showcase. For sure. Anything else from the baseball album? Um, so that there's Nolan. that there's yep. that Nolan Ryan. Yeah, there's that one. That one's that one's kind of the star of the baseball piece in the collection. Yeah, so you got some names in here that are better yeah. than others, like Willie Stargell, but that's a late that's, career yeah. Willie Stargell. Still gonna be in that probably five you, to eight. I've, did maybe, you look at yeah. the Pete Rose? I maybe pull that one out. I haven't looked at that one yet. Look the Pete Rose up. I don't think that's gonna do anything crazy, and it's not in the best condition. It's kind of a mid career. It still may be worth looking at individually. What a story though. That was wild. He just that's a he crazy, crazy find. Literally found these in the attic of a house yeah, that he was, bought to yeah. flip. Yeah. They're just sitting in the attic. Someone yeah. left them all behind. And then he forgot about them. And then he forgot about for about them for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. But at least he had the good sense when he found them to go buy an album and put oh, it in yeah. an album. All right, so I think we pulled out the four from the album and then everything else we kind of put more of a bulk price on. Yeah. All right, so should we do the same for the other two albums? Yes. Okay. All right, so how about the 1969 basketball collection? I think the main ones were the Oscar Robertson. I looked a few up. Other than that, there's a couple that are in the like ten dollar range, but the Oscars were the highlights of the basketball. I think there was a Lenny Wilkins in here. Len Wilkins. Oh, actually, oh, Walt, Walt Frazier. Frazier. Okay. Yeah, the Walt Frazier would be worth looking at. That's yep. not a great conditioned Walt Frazier. It, the centering on that's pretty, pretty poor. That's definitely like a miscut. Yeah. If you were to grade that, that's probably getting like a, it's, it's getting a low grade. They might give it a miscut Yeah, they grade. could give it like a 4 yeah, MC at, or four something MC, like that. Yeah, 4 MC, yeah, something of that nature, yeah. But look that up and see what's it doing raw. Yeah, 20 bucks maybe. Yeah, I would say it's probably about there in that condition. Okay, uh, there's a Willis Reed. You could check that one out yep. and see. That's probably going to go a little less, I would think, than the Walt Frazier. Len Wilkins. That's actually a nice Len Wilkins. Here, you look up Willis Reed. Yep. I'm going to look up Len Wilkins. Perfect. Yeah, this might, be, this might do 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. So we'll just keep that as part of the bulk deal then on that one. What about the Willis Reed? You see how it looks? Ten, ten, um, I think it was looking pretty good actually. Let's take a look. A little left to right. A little left to right. Um, you know, typical yeah. issues with the corners and the mm -hmm. edges. Uh, but surface on it looks pretty clean. Maybe this got a shot of like a six. Yeah, I'd say probably in, with a six, probably 25. 25 bucks? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll pull this one out then. All right. So those are the basketball cards that are a little more noteworthy. Yep. What stood out to you in the football album? The Namus and the Unitas's were kind of the ones that really popped out to me. Yeah, look at look at a few of these mm -hmm. here. Like, let's look up the Len Dawson and the Fran Tarkenton. The Sonny Jurgensen's in pretty bad shape. But I'd be curious about those two. I'll look up the Bolitnikov. Yep. 1970 Topps Glossy. Yeah, that's only like a dollar card. Is the Fran Tarkenton anymore? Maybe a little bit? No. Maybe a little bit. 
It, oh, there's some that are just a yeah, dollar, two probably dollar. in the condition. Have to be really conditioned, yeah. Yeah, I would say it's probably gonna be in that bulk. Okay, so this one's worth pulling out, I think. Yeah, it definitely is. And let's look at the condition of it a little closer. Oh, that's pretty nice. I would say in that condition, it, we could probably put that one on the higher end of that range we were just looking at. So maybe like, here's like here's one for 27.50. This one's maybe a little better Might be than slightly, that one. Yeah. say 30 bucks on yeah. it? Yeah. 30 bucks? There's the Unitas's right there. Okay, pull these out. Yeah, this one. This this one's in a rough condition. Yeah, it's way off Poorly center. centered, really, really bad corner yep. issue there. This one's better, you still got issues with both corners. It's mm -hmm. still gonna grade pretty low. I would say those, this, the left one for sure, right one might, but they, it looks like they're gonna squeak into the bulk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why don't we leave one of them out of the bulk? Yeah, I think we, we could leave the, the right one out. Okay. Left one, I think definitely is in the bulk. What's the right one, you think? Like a $10? Probably 10 to 15 okay. on that one. All right. And then how, how are we gonna price the bulk? figure out how many we have left after we pull out the ones we are gonna actually price out and then offer somewhere in the couple dollar range per card on the rest mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, you got, you know, like cards like Bob Greasy and Larry Zonka, those are big names, but they're also poorly conditioned. Yeah. You know, they're not gonna do much. So there's the Joe name. Yeah. Now that's terribly off center, unfortunately. That one's like a one. That's pretty similar I to the think, one you're looking at yeah, there. Yeah, that's it's pretty, pretty close, yeah. that's 16 bucks. 16 bucks, that's like a $15 yep. yeah, type card. And then there's another name it, which is basically the same. Put that one right about the same yeah right, right about the same yeah yeah you can see both of those are i mean awesome cards it's an awesome joe namath card this was what i think this was the year after he won the super bowl right i believe I that was the so. year after he won the super bowl but unfortunately the centering on both of them is atrocious the top the top bottom centering is atrocious on both of those so but they're still they're still cool cards they're still joe namath cards from over 50 years ago so you can't go wrong with that a bart, bart star, star yeah but the condition's, the condition's a little rough on that yeah. one so i think our strategy then is you're going to price all those individually Yep. And then we're going to take a percentage off of them, essentially. And then the rest of them, we're just going to give them a kind of a bulk offer on just buying the rest of the cards in bulk. Yep. All right. So why don't you go ahead and total up and then let's see where we're at. Sounds good. A few moments later. All right. So you've added it up. Yep. What are you thinking for the whole thing? I would like to be at a thousand for all of it. I think it gets him on this stuff at a pretty good price and then gets us with the bulk in a good spot where you can put it a few dollars and still do all right. Okay, where did we, so these cards by themselves, where how did where did these kind of add up to? Yep, so total added up 350 value. Okay. Um, and, and if you was wanting to do cash, we'd go a little less than that, but 350 value. Okay, and then so, and then there were about, once with these taken out, mm -hmm. there were 600 and- And 67. Of these cards, so yep. we're, we're offering them a little bit over a dollar a card, mm -hmm. essentially, yep. for these cards, yep. you know, which is, I think, totally fair. There's some in there that are worth you know, five, 10 bucks, mm -hmm. but then there's a bunch of them in there. There's a, there's are, a lot that are you know, a dollar, a dollar or, two. or two. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So, and they'll, a lot of them will probably sit in our value bins for a while. Exactly. So yeah. I think that that's fair. So a thousand mm -hmm. for the whole thing is what you're gonna offer yep. them. Yeah, I think that's fair. And would that be cash or store credit? That'd be cash. Okay, thousand mm -hmm. cash. Yep. Okay. I think that's good. All right, yeah. let's, uh, let's, let's let them know. So what we did here was we pulled out all of the cards that were the ones that were more valuable, the ones that were more than, you know, five five or 10 bucks, you know, that these were these. Um, there he is, OJ. OJ. OJ, and that actually is an OJ Simpson rookie card. It is. Um, yeah, if it wasn't, believe it or not, that is his rookie card. If that wasn't, if that wasn't his rookie, it wouldn't be worth very much. It is his rookie card, so that's worth a little more. It's still not worth a ton, um, but we put, I think, about a $30 value on that card. So that's, you know, there's, there are people who still love OJ Simpson rookie cards. <laughs> um, so, you know, they got some value. So, yeah, these are all the ones that, you know, have some value to them. We priced, we think that the fair market value, if you were to sell these, you know, kind of one by one, would probably be about $350 for what you're looking at here on the table. And if you're interested in, you know, kind of how that breaks down, um, I think the Nolan Ryan is the one that we determined was probably the most valuable. It's probably worth about $150. Um, the rest of them, we've got it somewhere between about $15 and $30 per card. Okay, um, so what about the whole set? So the whole entire set, so our offer for everything is $1,000 in cash. So that would, include, that would include these plus the rest of them. Um, that puts, essentially that's kind of a bulk rate for the rest of the cards. We're pricing those cards at a little bit over a dollar a card at bulk rate. Um, there's some in there that are, you know, probably five dollar, eight dollar type cards, and then there's a lot of other ones in there that, 
even if we price them at a dollar, would probably sit here for a while because they're players that nobody's, you know, nobody Heard necessarily of. remembers. So that you know, there's 600 and something cards over here. So you know, and collectively we priced them a little bit over a dollar, you know, a dollar a card for the bulk rate, and then added these in, and that's how we got to a thousand dollars cap. And they'll go nowhere but up in value for the most part. The the if correctly sure, scored. Sure, I would not, I would not expect them to go down in value. The bigger name players are obviously the ones that are going to hold interest over time. Some of the players in these books, ones that you know people don't necessarily remember their names today. You know, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, people might remember their names even less. But then again, if people are trying to build sets, you know, these cards are good for set builders, right? They're not good for people who necessarily remember those players. And, and unfortunately, the people who remember those players are getting fewer by the year now. Uh, but for set builders, these are good cards to have. So if somebody's trying to build a complete set of 1969 basketball or 1970 football, those are good filler cards to have. But you know, our strategy for a lot of these cards, we would top load or all of them. We'd put them in, in value bins out here. We'd probably price them, price most of them at a couple of bucks each. Some of them, you know, might be five bucks each or something of that nature. But that's how we would sell these cards off. These ones, we would probably, for the most part, grade these um, and you know, submit them and then eventually they would end up in our showcases. They're not the best condition, um, you know, but they're big enough names that we would grade them. And, and they are names that, yeah, I think over time, um, you know, Willie Mays, Nolan Ryan, Pete Rose, you know, Oscar Robertson, you know, Willis Reed, Walt Frazier, Joe Namath, O.J. Simpson, Johnny Unitas, they're all, they're all names that people know and will hopefully continue to remember for many years. Okay, so once again, it was three fifty for these yep. and then a thousand. Well, three three fifty is kind of the retail market value on it, right? So, you know, we would we would be a little bit below that because we would be buying it and trying to resell it. Like three fifty would be if you were to go, let's say, on eBay and list every single card individually right now, you probably would end up with about three hundred and fifty dollars somewhere in that nature for all the cards. Yeah, and in my head I was kind of thinking quite a bit more, right? Okay. As always, right? Yeah, sure, sure. Um you know, but I mean, I was thinking at a minimum three, right? For the whole set because- Oh, wow, okay, yeah, 3,000. But, but we're okay. way out there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, if you're saying, and like I said, I'm gonna get rid of all of it, right? Yeah. I mean, so- Yeah, we couldn't, we wouldn't be able to- so I'm thinking- I mean, To be thousand. honest, we wouldn't be able to- Two? Buy them and make profit on the whole thing at three. Okay. Uh, there's just, there, it just, we just wouldn't be able to do that. Um, I don't think we could even do that at 2000. It's, yeah, because it's, these, these ones are certainly, the ones here on the table are certainly more liquid, right? These ones are ones that we know for certain we could put out and we could sell quickly because of the names on the cards. All right. The challenge with some of these is they're gonna sit. You know, they're, they're, they're gonna sit for months you know, and to, you got to get the right person to come through. And, Understood. Um, you know, because you're dealing with a lot of cards that aren't big names, but also a lot of cards that are also aren't in great condition either. Okay. So that's. So, I think, personally, I think a good price for me would be fifteen. Fifteen hundred. Or I'll just put them back in the box and let them sit for another twenty. Okay. All right. Let Let Trey and I talk about that for a moment. Okay. So that's obviously more than what we wanted to pay. Um. At 1500 do you think we can really still make money on this thing? I think at 15 we we're cutting it close. It cuts, it cuts it close, mm -hmm. doesn't it? It, it, it does. eats into the profit margin quite a bit. After um, having to have someone top load and yeah. re-sleeve all of it. Yeah. I'm worried about, like, there's names in there that people will definitely buy, but then there's a lot of cards in there that are not well-known players that are in not very good condition. And it just it worries me, those cards, I mean, even those cards we're pricing them at, you know, a little bit over a dollar, dollar fifty, but some of those might, we might price them at a two dollars and they might sit there for a year. Yeah, yeah. You know, I guess you might have, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we would have a set builder show up. That'd be ideal. That would be ideal. Yeah. If, you know, if we put them all out there and you had somebody who was trying to build a 1969 basketball set and mm -hmm. was like, oh, perfect and they're willing to pay five bucks a card for commons or something yeah. like that, then, then we could very rapidly sell them and make our money back. Um, it does become tougher at 15. It does. Yeah. Um, so if we were to grade some of these, mm -hmm. let's see, the, 
the Nolan Ryan. The Nolan will be our biggest. Yeah, and, and what green. what is the? Yeah, I'm curious what the upside is on a couple of these yeah. from you know from for grading purposes. So a PSA five just did 200. Yeah, and I would be I would be nervous to assume that's going to do any more than a five. It's in good condition, but the grading on a lot of these vintage yeah, cards is so tough. There's a five one for that did 263. Two, yeah. But you know we got to pay. We'll have to pay 20 dollars to grade it. Yep. And we're already offering 150 for mm -hmm. it. So we would get a little bit of upside from grading all of these, but not yeah. a ton of upside. Maybe we might squeeze, we might, yeah, dollars. we might squeeze out a few hundred dollars yeah. with the upside. That's what I was thinking. If we grade all of them. What is that OJ Simpson doing in higher grade since that is his rookie card? And that that one is in nice condition. I mean, seven gets you like 230. I don't know about a seven on that though. What is like a five? Five gets you to like that looks like 130. Okay. And we price it. We price it out at 30, mm -hmm. 20 for a grading fee. So there's it for 50, 50 bucks of upside. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I bet if we graded all of these, now granted that takes work and capital, but I yep. bet if we graded all of these, we might end up with an extra $300 yeah. um, over, you know, what what we kind of mm -hmm. assume the values to yeah. be. So we probably have a little bit of margin to work with there. Mm -hmm. 1500 still feels a little high to me for the whole collection though. Yeah, what are you, definitely does. What are you thinking right now in terms of, of where we can move on it? I think the absolute most we can come up to is like 12. Yeah, I was thinking 1250. I was thinking meet them in the middle of 1250 and just kind of a take I, it or leave it type yeah, offer. Yeah, I would say that's kind of, yeah. at 1250 we're still able to make a little bit on it. Yeah. But once you start getting over that, you're you're getting cutting into you're, you're cutting it close, yeah. yeah. And obviously, we're not a, we're not a charity. Yeah, <laughs> we, got, yep. we got to make money. We do. That's what that's what card stores do. Yep. So, um, but you know, we want to give people a fair deal at the same time. And honestly, I think that's a very fair deal for this collection. I do too. Okay. All right. Let's offer him twelve fifty. And yep. if he takes it, great. And if he doesn't take it, then no hard feelings. Yep. And we we wish him well. 100%. It's a deal that didn't get done. Yep. All right. Sounds cool. good. All right. So Trey and I just went through, we looked at what margin we think we would have on all these cards. We looked at the possibility of, if we were to grade all of these, what margin do we think we would get off the grading additional margin to see if we could add that back into, back into the offer. The best we can do for everything is $1,250 cash. But what I will do, if you are willing to accept that offer, is I'll also throw in a Daryl Strawberry rookie card for you. Because I know you were looking, you were asking earlier if for Daryl Strawberry in the case. I do have a Daryl Strawberry rookie card in the back. I would throw in a Daryl Strawberry rookie card for you. I, I look at it this way, and it's, you know, I was explaining to my girlfriend, which she doesn't get the logic, that if I don't sell it for a certain price in my head, and you're saying 1250, I was yeah. saying 1500, that I will take these cards, I will put them back, and they will not come out until after I am dead, yeah, right? Until my lifetime. And I'll let my, yeah. you know, people handle it. But you threw, you started talking about Daryl, <laughs> right? And I have remedies. I've only been to three baseball games in my entire life. One of them was with the A's against Daryl. Okay. And I spent, I was 10 years old. Yeah. And I remember every time Daryl came out, we all we did was go, Daryl. Uh -huh. Through every time when he went out and when he left. Uh -huh. So that memory's great. So. 14 and the Daryl card. Uh, Work with me, like I said, these will not see the light of day yeah, in my I mean, lifetime. Trey and I just talked as, as 1250 being our top. He wanted to make 1200 the top, and I said, let's meet him Come halfway. Come on, man, what's wrong with you? I said, let's meet him halfway and go 1250. 13, come on, there it is. 13 with the, with the Daryl card. Because that saves me from having to find a suitcase to put these in. I think we'd come up to like 1275, but at, at 13, we're starting to cut it close on what we're able to make out of it. Would you take any, would you take any store credit or you just want cash? Cash. Yeah. Because we can give you a little more if you, if you that's why I was asking that question. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it'd be, we'd be happy to give you, if you want to take part of it in store credit, 13 would be all right. But I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. not a, I'm not a I collector, right? Yeah. Other than. Wilt here, it's got a little <laughs> special place in my yeah. heart. How about, how about 1275 and I'll give you, I, I think I got two Daryl Strawberry rookie cards in the back. I'll bring them out and you can pick the nicer of the two. 
You know what? That's the way that'll work. Okay. That'll work. Yeah, good deal? All right, that's let's good. do it. That'll there we go. Awesome. Oh, and you got to throw in a container for this because this is hideous. We will throw we in a container you. for that. Yep. You got it. Okay, there we go. We bought an entire vintage collection for Cards HQ, yep. some that we're going to grade, a lot that will go into value bins, but it's awesome, and I appreciate you trusting with uh, trusting us with your collection. Yeah. Such a cool story about how you found it, and we'll we'll make sure that that you know that we take good care of this for sure. All right, have fun with it. All right, I got to go awesome. get your Daryl Strawberry card. I'm going to let Trey here start to box it up. I'll be back cool. in a minute. Thanks. All right, so I opened up a box of 1984 Topps baseball recently. Actually, the video is on our Sports Card Investor channel. Okay. And in that box of 1984 Topps baseball, I pulled two Daryl Strawberry rookie cards. All right. So these are truly packed fresh. I pulled them myself. Excellent. They're both actually in really good condition. So I'm going to let you choose between the two. Since I said I would, I'll let you choose which of the two you want. And then the other one I'll keep. Okay, all right. You, you made your selection. Now you own a Daryl Strawberry rookie. Yes. So congratulations. Darryl. And then Trey's got some cash here to pay you all out right. as well. There Love you don't go. pay the $1, rent. $1,275. Nice. Money, money, money. Count money. that out. Good. Love don't pay the rent. There you go. There you go. All right. There Once you again, go. thanks. Congratulations. Oh, you owe not, me a, you Not owe... bad for an attic find. Yeah. Not, you know. You not... owe me a case for little my little friend here. Yep. We'll get that as well for you. All right. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.